Hello and welcome. My name is Kurt Vest. I'm here at Owls. We are uh, together at the Vice tonight. We're putting together um, tonight uh, one of the patterns from the life cycle of Mayfly. We're going to be putting together a few of these patterns so that hopefully you can pick up some tips and techniques for your own tying at home. Hope you enjoy it. Before we get started tonight, just to explain a little bit about the life cycle of the mayfly. Mayfly has, you know, four distinct life stages. The nymph, the emerger, or the cripple, the adult, or the dun, and the spent adult, or the spinner. So we're going to be tying patterns that represent each of, each of these stages in the life cycle. In this video, we're going to be tying the mayfly nymph. All right, we are starting the bead-headed PMD turkey tail nymph. This is a pattern that is kind of a generic pattern that's designed to imitate the nymphal stage of the pale morning dun or PMD mayfly. Um, this is tied on a TM Co uh, number 3761 hook. This is a size 14 and I have a two millimeter tungsten copper bead. Um, we're going to start with some Vivas. This is a Vivas thread. This is an A dot Vivas thread in brown. And we're just going to get started. Get that thread started on the hook and start moving down. It's important when you're tying to have reference points to work from. And when I'm tying, I like to use the hook as the reference. And when I put on that thread base, I want it to stop right at that barb of that hook. That's the length of the body. For the tail, we're going to be using a material, it's lemon wood duck. And these feathers are beautiful. They are finely um, modeled or speckled. And these are just perfect um, for imitating the tail of the natural PMD nymph. So I'm just kind of preening this back and I'm going to select out oh, eight or ten of these uh, little fibers and we're going to measure this against the hook, again using your hook as a reference. And I want these tails to be about the length of the body, maybe just a tad shy or short of that length of the body. And we're going to offer these in a little pinch wrap and attach these to the top of the hook shank. <clears throat> Trim off the excess. We're going to rib this with some ultra uh, gold wire. This is a small size. And so we'll take a little length of ultra gold wire off the spool. And I want this underbody to stay smooth. And so what I do is I'll advance this thread back to the bead. I tuck that little tip of the wire inside the bead and I tie in from there. It's a little tip that helps to keep that underbody nice and smooth. And I'd take that thread back to the tie-in point of the tail right there at that barb. For the, t for the body, the thorax, of this fly, I'm using an Ozark turkey tail feather. They look like this, and these tail feathers have this cool mottled appearance to them, kind of brown and tan. And again, these, these work really well for kind of representing the natural mayfly nymph's body color. So I'm going to select out, probably have a few too many here. I'm going to take out a couple of these. I've got four or so fibers from that tail and I'm going to clip that off clean and I'm going to tie this in and I tie this in with my terminating end up here in this section where the wing case is going to go again I'm trying to keep this this underbody really thin so we're going to start by just wrapping these around the hook shank and this is going to form a nice little slender kind of fuzzy body on this 
nymph and these just wrap real clean slender kind of tapered up and we're gonna tie those off and now I'm gonna counter wrap with my gold wire and this gold wire goes counter or opposite direction of what direction those turkey tail feathers went and this helps to secure in your uh, tail fibers so that if a fish's tooth gets in there it doesn't pull apart with the first fish and just even wraps with that gold wire and then we're just going to tie that off and then just helicopter to break that wire off Okay, so we're going to bring that thread back to about, oh, the one-third point if we're including the bead in that measurement. And we're going to tie in a wing case that folds over the top of this. And for this wing case, I'm going to come up here into my turkey tail feather, and I'm going to use some of this section that's really dark. It's almost black. When these mayfly nymphs start to emerge and get ready to hatch out, that wing case becomes really, really dark. And so we're going to kind of mimic that, imitate that with this. It's almost pearlescent up here at the top, but this darkened area of the turkey tail fiber. Again, trim off a clean tie in section. And we're going to lay this up on top and tie in. And sometimes I like to just fold that over, measure it, see if I want a little bit more wing case there, which I do. And that's about right for me. I want that wing case to just be, just be perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna dub in the, th the uh, thorax of this fly. And for dubbing, I've got this hairline. This is just a micro fine dry fly. And this selection, just a bunch of different colors. I like to take a few colors and mix together. I take a dark brown like a trico, and this is like a calabatus, which is like a gray. Kind of a dark brown and a gray. And you could take a little bit of olive if you like to. And that kind of triple combination works well. I'm just gonna sort of blend this together roughly in my hands. So we've got a pretty decent mix of our dubbing color. And we're gonna just dub this on real thin dubbing it's really easy to overdub a fly it's it's easy to put too much on so when we're just beginning or tying flies it's it's better to put too little on and then if you need to add more later on you can but i'm just going to dub real thin and i'm putting it on the thread and twisting it in one direction which helps that those fibers just to envelop around the thread so I've got about an inch and a half, two inch noodle of dubbing here, and I'm just gonna dub this thorax. I just want it to be kind of a kind of a round little ball, just like that. And lastly, we're gonna finish with legs. And for the legs, I'm gonna use the same feather that I used for the tail, which is this lemon wood duck. And I'm gonna take off, oh, I don't know, 15 to 20 fibers of this. And it's enough, I'm gonna split it over the top of the hook shank so that we've got legs on either side. And again, the color of this wood duck is pretty much spot on. The speckling and everything is pretty much spot on with what the naturals look like. So I have my clump and I've kept the tips together and I'm just gonna lay it roughly the length that I want. We can adjust this in a minute. I'm just going to sort of split this into two little clumps, just kind of roughly, roughly even number of fibers on either side. And I'm just going to lay over the top. I'm going to pinch it with my left hand, the length I want. I'm just going to do kind of a, a loose wrap over the top. And then I can pull my left hand away and view that. And I have those legs about where I want. I'm going to shorten those just a little bit. So I'm just carefully pulling on those to shorten them. Now that we've got them 
about the length that I want. That's about right. Maybe just a tad shorter. That looks better. Okay. Then I'm just going to really secure those down with a couple tight thread wraps. And I can peel these legs back and just kind of trim them off the, the butt ends. Okay, so we've got those legs secured. I'm just gonna pull over my wing case and this just comes over the top and I want it to lay down so it's kind of broad over the top. I don't want it to all bunch up into a thin, bent, uh, thin bunch. I'm just gonna lay it over the top broadly. And again, I'm just gonna take a loose wrap over and make sure that that's as I want it. And take a couple more wraps and then I like to fold this back and do just one or two kind of securing wraps underneath it. So that feather is pinched in through the through the thread wraps. And just trim that off nice and tight. And then lastly, we're just gonna whip finish and tie this off. I like this hook. It's a straight shank hook. You can do this on a curved shank hook as well. But I like this 3761 because it's a 2X heavy hook. And so it gets down with the tungsten bead, it gets down, but it also, it holds up to some of these brawnier fish that are gobbling these nymphs under the surface. So I'll do a two or three turn whip finish there, and I trip it off. And then just to finish the fly, I put a little head cement, this is a little water-based head cement that I put into those thread wraps. Just let it soak in, and if a little soaks into that wing case too, that's not a bad thing. That just helps to hold that head together. And that is the bead headed PMD turkey tail nymph. This pattern works really well during uh, a PMD hatch. I fish it under a dry fly. I'll fish it as a dropper under a, a like a big attractor, like a chubby Chernobyl. And it catches fish anywhere there's pale morning duns in the water, this is a really effective pattern. Well, we hope you enjoyed those videos. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for more information about tying your own flies, getting started with fly tying or fly fishing, check out uh, owls.com or come into any of Owl's sporting goods stores. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.